As we mark one year from the withdrawal from Afghanistan, a new Republican report accuses the White House of knowingly misleading Americans about that withdrawal a year ago. The House Foreign Affairs Committee saying, quote, the choices made in the quarters of power in D.C. led to tragic yet avoidable outcomes, 13 dead service members, American lives still at risk, and increased threats to our homeland security. Yeah, Joe Biden just being Joe Biden got us that result. But the White House says, quote, this partisan report is riddled with inaccurate characterizations, cherry-picked information, and false claims. Congressman Ronnie Jackson sits on the Foreign Affairs Committee and and reviewed the report. Congressman, what do you think about the pushback from the White House? Well, I think it's understandable because they don't want the truth to get out there, Brian. I think from the very beginning, we've known a lot of this, and this just validates uh, what, what we thought was going on all along. It outlines the lack of planning, the lack of, the lack of urgency by the White House, uh, by the National Security Council, by the State Department. It shows that they disregarded a lot of the information they were getting from the Department of Defense, from the military. They just completely disregarded that. They put the State Department in pretty much in charge of this entire evacuation procedure. And, and it, you can see what it led to. It led to a colossal failure. We've destroyed our reputation abroad. We lost 13 service members in the process. And I, I think that we have a lot of whistleblowers that have come out that have contributed to this report. I think it's very accurate. I think it's very telling. I think it's only the beginning of what we're going to find out once we get the House back in January and we really start oversight into this. But, of course, the White House does not like this. Congressman, it says that uh, Republicans' intentions are to use subpoena power if they take back the majority in November because the State Department has blocked these 34 current officials that they yeah. want to talk to and they block mm -hmm. them from appearing in front of the committee why do they do that don't ask me i mean they don't want they don't want them to tell the truth i mean there's going to be a lot of finger pointing when that happens you can, you can be assured of that and we started asking for these people to come and testify before congress and to give us written statements back in november of last year and so far we've been completely blocked and that's why people are disgusted with what's going on in our government right now is because there's absolutely no accountability something like this cannot happen and nobody be held accountable for it and that's where we're at right now so we will get to the bottom of this and and we will find out what happened to the billions of dollars of weapons that we left behind all the SIVs the special immigrant visa applications that were out there that didn't and we left these people behind these people a lot of them have fled into Iran to keep from being killed by the Taliban. And now Iran has access to these people that uh, know a lot about our tactics and our procedures. And, yeah. and it's just really, it's a national security issue for us. Absolutely, Admiral. And, you know, it didn't have to be like this because no. the president's own general said, please leave a residual force of 2,500 there so that, the, you know, Al Qaeda doesn't come in and, and take over. Uh, but in the meantime, Joe Biden called it an extraordinary success. But ultimately, here we are a year later, and it looks like two decades of, of real effort down the drain. You're right, you're, you're right, Steve. It, absolutely. And it's so frustrating to me because the few times that we have had people come before us in Congress, all they've done is try to pat themselves on the back for what an uh, unbelievable logistical feat they pulled off. It's ridiculous. It, it just infuriates everyone when we hear that on both sides of the aisle. And you're right. They, they requested, the Department of Defense requested leave 2,500 troops plus 6,000 NATO troops. We should have left them at Bagram. We could have done this in a logical, in a controlled fashion. No one would have got killed. And we could have turned this over like it was supposed to be done. But it was done for political reasons. That's the problem with all of this. Congressman Jackson, thank you for coming on. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you having me. And You're also welcome. pick up his book. It's excellent. It's called Holding the Line, just about your a remarkable career uh, in the Navy, in the military, at the White House, and now in Congress. Dr. Admiral, mm -hmm. member of Congress. Mm -hmm. He was the doctor at the White House during the Trump administration.